Jesse Duplantis is on an ego trip. I will make no excuses for the blessings of God in my life, whether they be spiritual, physical, or financial. Uh, you know, when they were fighting me about them jets, my lady said he has four jets. Well, I've never owned four jets at one time, but they gave me an idea. I thought, well, <laughs> praise the Lord, why not? Delta's got more than four. Americans got more. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching. I can feel, I can feel that pushback. I mean, you don't want to know what God looks like. Hold your hand up. Come on. Look. Even if you are a supporter of Jesse Duplantis, we highly encourage you to watch this video until the end because we will show you clip after clip of Jesse saying things that frighten you. Delta's got more than four. Americans got more. Don't shout me down. I can feel that pushback. Jesse Duplantis is unique in that he is not just a false preacher who promotes the prosperity gospel, which is not at all the true gospel, but he is also an arrogant false preacher who makes no apologies for it. Delta and American have more than four planes because investors and lenders fund them. But Jesse takes advantage of his gullible followers to fund his private jets. Jesse and other false preachers have reduced Christianity to health, wealth, fame, and happiness. It is a shame and an embarrassment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who suffered and died on the cross to free people from the punishment of sin and to grant them eternal life in heaven. See, I found out what God was able to do, and I found out what I'm able to do. Have you ever saw me sad, sick, depressed, discouraged, despondent? <laughs> Why, why, who do you think you are? You don't have enough time for me to tell you who I am. Because I got to start at page one. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was out form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord God moved upon the waters. And God said, let's make Jesse. <laughs> Unquestionably, this man is on an ego trip for real. Sadly, this false teacher misquotes the Bible and takes verses out of context to justify his false teachings. He claims to have the power to decide when he lives and dies. Doesn't that make him God? He says death and life is in the power of whose tongue? Yours. You ready for this? You want something to knock your lights off? You choose when you live. You choose when you die. Death and life is in the power of your tongue, not God's. Now you got the power, but he will not exercise that because you are a speaking spirit. We're not shocked Jesse has the audacity to make such a statement considering he claims to be a god, as we discussed in this video about the top 10 prominent televangelist preachers who claim to be gods. If you wish to see the other preachers, click on the link in the description. Things they say will take your breath away. Please join us in our fight for the truth. Please share our videos, subscribe, like, and comment. We appreciate your help. What you've got is a bunch of goats and tares among the sheep. And because very little biblical compassionate church discipline is practiced, they live among the sheep, they feed on the sheep, and they destroy the sheep. And those of you who are leaders in the church are going to pay a high penalty when you stand before the one who loves them. Because you did not have enough courage to stand up and confront the wicked. As a matter of fact, listen to me. But here's what happens. Because the preaching of the gospel is so low, the church is basically, the majority of it are carnal, lost people. And because it is a democracy, they by, by and large govern the direction of the church. And because the pastor doesn't want to lose the great number of people, and because he has wrong ideas regarding evangelism and true conversion, he caters to the wicked in his church. And his little group of true sheep that belong to Jesus Christ are sitting there in the midst of all the theater, in the midst of all the worldliness, in the midst of all the multimedia going, we just want to worship Jesus and we just want someone to teach us the Bible and pastors are going to pay for that! We need pastors who will boldly and courageously speak and defend biblical truth. Unfortunately, Jesse Duplantis is a flat-out false preacher. From time to time, God seeks the opinion of arrogant Jesse, and if Jesse says no, God is bound to respect it. I've had God come tell me, say, this is what I'm going to do. I've had the Lord literally say, what do you think about this? God has asked me for my opinion. God asks Jesse Duplantis for his opinion? Really? That, is that not shocking? Pray tell, Jesse, continue. Finish your thought. I said, well, Lord, since you ask, maybe I'm doing it. He said, no, we can talk frankly. What do you think? I said, well, I don't think you ought to do that. 
He says, why you don't think I ought to do that? I said, well, you know, I, I know you know people more than I do, but you know, Lord, if you just let me, let me do a little bit more work on this individual, I think we can get them to you. He says, okay, go ahead. Do what you have to do. And I tell you what, the Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. Yes, and he who thinks he can counsel God is a fool. God speaking, who is this that darkens my counsel by words without knowledge? The fact that God has not struck these people dead is a testimony to how merciful our God is. These people are not Christians. Dear friends, a Christian, a born again Christian, someone who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God cannot utter such blasphemies. Can't happen. Such a statement cannot be said from someone who knows God. Jesse Duplantis does not know the God of the Bible. Sadly, you get this when you believe you are a God. This man is not only speaking blasphemy, but also he is mocking God. You would think that a gospel preacher would be excited and eager for the return of Jesus Christ. Not Jesse Duplantis, especially when he has to pick up money people throw into his face. Watch this and it will make perfect sense to you. I got people throwing money over my fence at my house. Am I telling the truth, Jay? I got a broad iron fence around my home. I got a beautiful home. Don't get mad at me. It ain't my fault. I hope this is on television. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. And I walked out in the front on Christmas Eve because I, I can't go in my front yard because people stop all the time. So I have to go in the back. And I went out and this man saw me in the pickup truck. Ah! He just slammed these brakes. So jumped out the truck. Merry Christmas, Brother Jesse. And I went, oh, Merry Christmas. And he threw $5,000 over the fence. $100 bills flying all over. I said, don't let the rapture take place now. Hang on, let me get all this. <laughs> I'm stuffing on it. I am not exaggerating. The Word of God says in Colossians 3 verse 2 that believers should set their affection on things above, not on things on the earth. It does appear, however, that Jesse Duplantis is more concerned about this life's pleasures than seeking the things above. Ironically, the same Jesse Duplantis, who doesn't want the rapture to happen, once claimed that giving money to him and his fellow charlatan, Kenneth Copeland, would hasten the return of Jesus Christ. The reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, when you understand, it, you can speed up the time. And I really believe this. If people would call this number and put this victory all over the world on every available voice, every available outlet, God, the Father, he would say, Jesus, go get him. Yeah. Because you see, he wants to see us as much as we want to see him. You see what I'm saying? And so what has hindered all these things is, right. uh, uh, it's because people are not doing in the financial realm because we live in an economic world. Let the rapture take place now. Hang on, let me get all this. <laughs> <laughs> the reason why Jesus hadn't come is because people are not giving the way God told them to give. You get this when you have an arrogant and greedy false prosperity gospel, name it and claim it preacher. Jesse Duplantis has graduated from a wolf in sheep's clothing to a wolf looking like and speaking like a real wolf. Yet his duped followers still mistake him for a faithful preacher of the gospel. And uh, so this guy was on, I was on television. He said, I heard you was a millionaire. I said, that's not right. That's not true. He said, yes, it is. I said, no, it's not. Multi. Now add that to it and you'll be all right. <laughs> oh, he couldn't handle that. He liked to have had a fit. And I said, you mess with me, I'll buy this station and I'll fire you. Yeah, oh, he didn't like that, then he did. You know, that was a little fleshy, but it felt good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Just did. You know what I this man's level of pride makes Lucifer, Satan, look like a saint. We pray Jesse repents before the wrath of God is poured out on him for blasphemy and for mocking God. It just keeps getting worse. Jesse Duplantis claimed that God created animals, but they were lifeless and he didn't know what to call the animals he made. For that reason, he had to bring them to Adam because Adam was a speaking spirit. Are you ready for this? But God didn't quit forming stuff out the dust. He created all kinds of animals, but he didn't know what it was. What is that? I have no idea what that is. God made animals and didn't have that foggiest idea what they were. Really, Jesse? What else do you have to say? You want to prove it to you? Tell me the book of Genesis chapter 2. God made a horse and didn't have that foggiest idea what a horse was. Made a horse out the dirt, standing there like a mannequin. Look at me like this. I had no idea what it was. He just sculptured it. You don't believe me? I'll really prove it to you. Genesis chapter 2 verse 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed 
every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them. Look at me. Look at me. He didn't walk them. He didn't fly them. He brought them. Watch me. Pick it up. Bring it over there. Unto Adam to see what he would call them. He didn't know what it was. He just made something. He said, what do you think that is, Adam? Adam's a speaking spirit. He said, that's a horse. <laughs> hey, Adam. Do you know that they were not alive when he brought them? He didn't walk them. He brought them. They were just like Adam was. Adam was creating the image of God. He was a speaking spirit like God is. Animals were not alive when God brought them to Adam? Please listen carefully to these verses Jesse quoted out of context and judge for yourself if there is any indication that Adam was the person who gave life to animals. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found unhelp meat for him. Genesis 2, verses 19 to 20. This is sheer blasphemy. No human being, including Adam, has the power to give or speak life to animals. Several years ago, Jesse Duplantis had the opportunity to attend a gathering in the Vatican when the Pope gave a message. Please take note of Jesse's enthusiasm about meeting the Pope and hearing him speak. Also, watch how the congregation's ears are tickled without considering the implications of a so-called evangelical preacher becoming enamored with the Pope's sermon. A big, beautiful white piece of marble was given to Michelangelo, and he created the La Pieta. It's in the Vatican. I was in the Vatican. Oh, the Lord blessed me today. The Pope was there. So I got to go to one of the Pope's services. It was great. I thought, Lord, I got to know the Pope's going to be here. <laughs> I was great, man. I thought, glory to God, the Pope's here. I said, Catherine, the Pope's here. She said, man, the Lord blessed us, Jess. So we saw him in person, listened to him talk. Seemed like a sweet, precious man. All the cardinals there, you know. He, the one's in red. But he's in white. The other one's in black. A couple of purple, a little lavender, but the white and the red is where the power is. Did you hear him say the other day that the Lord blessed him because he heard the Pope speak? Are we being too critical of Jesse Duplantis, or are we witnessing enormous apostasy right in front of our eyes and someone needs to warn people to leave false systems of worship? When you hear blasphemies from the mouths of many quote-unquote evangelical preachers, it's hard not to conclude that Satan himself has taken over many pulpits, and many people are oblivious to it. Light and darkness can't coexist. What fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Apostle Paul asks in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14. Either Jesse Duplantis is ignorant of doctrines of Catholicism championed by the papacy, or he is a vessel used by the devil to deceive his followers. Mr. Duplantis, how do you get excited about the Pope who denies that you're saved by grace alone through faith in Christ alone, and that apart from Catholicism, no one can obtain salvation? The Bible makes it clear that salvation is found in no other but Jesus. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Acts 4, verse 12. Jesse, how can you praise a man who exalts Mary to almost the same position as Jesus? Because Catholicism considers Mary as the co-redemptrix, she presently and actively participates in the salvation of humanity. Mary, the mother of God, I think the recovery of the Church Fathers is key there. Um, this is not some invention of, of medieval Catholicism. Where is it coming from? I think the fact that she's um, the new Eve. And I think that's the deepest ground for our, our devotion to Mary, is she's, um, she's part of the remaking of the human race that's involved in salvation. She's part of the remaking of the human race that's involved in salvation. Indeed, the Pope may be a nice person, and we have nothing against that. But what he represents and how he undermines the authority of Jesus Christ by claiming that he is the vicar of Christ on earth is troubling at best and blasphemous at worst. Liars. 
They are liars because they do, not they do not speak according to what is written. They are hypocritical because they pretend to have a spirituality that is from God, but in actuality, at best, their spirituality is carnal or natural, and at worst, it's demonic. How do you know if one's spirituality is from God? Because it conforms to what is written. Jesse Duplantis has no business standing behind the pulpit as a pastor. He will do just fine as a comedian and not a pastor. God made a horse and didn't have the foggiest idea what a horse was. Made a horse out the dirt, standing there like a mannequin. Look at me, like this. Adam's a speaking spirit. He said, that's a horse. The bad news is that these ungodly doctrines promoted by false preachers like Mr. Duplantis will worsen as the second coming of Jesus approaches. The best way to avoid deception is to stay rooted in God's Word and constantly pray for wisdom and discernment. Jesus warned in Matthew 24 verse 24 that many false prophets shall arise and, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Stay on guard, folks. If you don't know Jesus, today is a great day to come to Him and ask Him to be your Lord and Savior. Amen.